Thank you for having us here. It's, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to be part of Ranjan. I uh, genuinely want to uh, really acknowledge the amount of work that all these people are doing, Floris, Jerry, everybody. It's incredible. But on top of that, I want to very briefly acknowledge we will be mentioning, I mean, where Grandjean originated from is, is very pertinent to our talk as well. Uh, although it's a bit of an indirect relationship, uh, if you look at the Ottoman uh, Empire's uh, print culture and typographic culture, you cannot distinguish that from the incredible work uh, Armenian uh, punch cutters and Armenian printers did. And actually, without them, Ottoman Empire would not have been able to distribute its information technology. And it, this is just, a, a, I think it's a, it's a nice moment where we can uh, acknowledge what happened in the history. So it's going to be a bit of a, a typographic historical uh, talk. Yeah, we are uh, both uh, staunch uh, individuals. And it's a bit of a miracle that we would be presenting together as kind of a Thompson twin. Um, I got to know, uh, 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 I go a little bit closer. I got to know uh, Alnur at, um, uh, at an ATI Pi uh, conference in Iceland, and I was fascinated by his knowledge, and I was also uh, attracted by the fact that he's Turk. And I, I study Turkic languages, and it's always fun to speak Turkish, and gradually <coughs> we discovered that we had a lot of interests in common, and maybe you should sort of complete that. Yeah. Um, the first time I, I met with Tom was again it, it, it was in Iceland. Actually, it was right before my talk. He presented his talk, so I was completely paralyzed. So I had a really hard time putting my, my mind back together to to speak. And um, I was I, I was extremely fascinated with with all the research he he has done uh, both alone as well as with with media. And um, that really inspired me to embark on uh, learning uh, the the. the Learning how to read Turkish with their script is pretty much what uh, ultimately script uh, constitutes. So that's what I did. I, uh, in, in a couple of years later, uh, I, I, I took classes and I, I learned. And now it's nice to be able to, you know, come back from on my way back from work to be able to spot these wonderful fountains and to know that it has nothing to do with Quran. It's actually talking about how the Sadrazam had beautiful eyes. So it's nice to actually also figure out those things. Anyway, it worked out as a foursome answer. We um, <laughs> uh, complement each other. Uh, uh, what he, uh, he knows things that I don't know, and I know things that he doesn't know, and we have a lot of overlap. And from there, we started uh, this talk with the idea, let's, uh, let's uh, d d delve into some history of, of the Arabic script, and, and particularly its typography, <coughs> um, and how this builds the basis for computer technology. And in a way, it summarizes the, uh, the way Decotype started its work in the first place. We, uh, uh, but with, together with, uh, with Onur, I can go th or we can go through Ottoman texts at an incredible speed, whereas I was really going through them in, sl in slow motion. But the actual observations are the same and are now being reinforced. Um. Maybe I should uh, make yeah, this comment. This is, yeah. the, this is the way uh, 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 people dis talk about Arabic script. It's always called elegant, and <laughs> I actually found this expression, elegantly printed books, in a grammar, a most uh, very authoritative grammar of Arabic, <laughs> where <coughs> what I would call correctly printed books are called elegantly printed books. Mm -hmm. Of course, being correct is elegant, but they, they didn't really mean it that way. Mm -hmm. And what I would call <coughs> consider typography that takes into account the actual structure of the language, of the script, it's called ornamental typography. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the, the, the camera position somehow is, posi is changed in a way that <coughs> the Arabic, the way the Arabs and the Turks deal with their own script is a bit odd. And, it, it, and we have more examples of that. Yeah, so uh, this is an example. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this is an acknowledgement from Times newspaper, printed in 1890, um, saying that there is this man called Ebu Ziya Mehmet Tevik, uh, actually right near Ottoman back, where people who have attended this type knows where the big this type building. It's actually two blocks, two, two buildings nearby, is where this guy had his printing shop. And perfection, where ornamental typography has been brought to a perfection unequaled in any European printing office of the same kind. So this is actually, it's a bit of a tricky thing uh, to use the word ornamental because it kind of 
uh, it kind of removes and it creates an association of something that is really, you know, doesn't have any bone or structure, but kind of like, you know, you can do it in, in a thousand different ways, it's okay, you know, kind of thing. And this is where we were curious to find out if we can actually show this and share with the, the public that if, it's, if it has a very rigorous structure, a, 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 a protocol actually, it's a social protocol, or not. So this is gonna, we're going to move on from there. So the irrational Orientals and the rational Europeans. <laughs> <coughs> so when, when, the, when they talk about the actual script, they call it ancient manuscripts. Uh, there are books even recently published with names like the Aura of Aleph, nice alliteration, the cosmic script. When I first saw it, I thought I, that's I, I looked at the comic script. The Aura of Aleph. <laughs> that's, that's, that's but that's but in all earnestness, they are describing a, a culture, but it's always with something religious or something with an aura. Mm. Okay. And, and these are these are the, the most fantastic ones. This is an older report by uh, <coughs> an investigator of the Middle East in the 18th century, who. Um, when describing uh, the reaction to printed European books, <laughs> he observes that Yemenis don't really like to read them. But he, the way he puts it is again an, uh, an example of the same <coughs> observation. The Arabians value chiefly a species of elegance, which consists of their manner of joining the letters, the want of which makes themselves dislike the style in which Arabic books are printed in Europe. <coughs> and a, a fantastic one I recently came across, there is a certain uh, Edward William Lane, who, who spent decades in Egypt uh, um, uh, in, uh, reading uh, um, source materials, building the best dictionary of, of, of the Arabic language ever, based on original Middle Eastern Arab dictionaries. But when he came back, of course, he was, he was immediately struck by the poor quality of the English uh, uh, Arabic uh, uh, prints. And, and, but it was put in this form. Back to England, Lane continued to work on the dictionary with zeal, complaining that he was so used to the cursive calligraphy of the Arabic manuscripts that the Western print strained his eyes. <laughs> yeah, there was parallel. And this is, um, this is uh, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm changing, yeah, yeah, the, changing my phone. This is my favorite. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, this, this is, is very inconvenient for printers. I said, like, who gives a damn about printers? Okay. This is William Wright in, in the uh, authoritative grammar of Arabic. Every um, uh, uh, Arabist has as his, as his education. And this is the kind of education that you get when you study Arabic. Okay, so we have, we, well, we're going to briefly introduce the terminology here. We will be using the term script grammar coined by, by Thomas Milo, uh, which uh, we mean by, by that, we mean uh, the, book, the communication protocol, the social protocol, convention in other words. Uh, cursive is a workhorse tool, calligraphy is subject of art, uh, and typography is the mechanization for mass, uh, massive distribution. Manual text manufacture is copying manuscripts, uh, mechanical text reproduction, information technology. And the subject matter is purely on script grammar, and we will be sharing some evidence for whether it exists or not. And the method that we will be using is uh, multiple printed editions uh, that, that I came across. Uh, for well, pure coincidence, I just found a book that was printed uh, in, 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 in three different uh, times in the 19th century, but we will go into that. It's um, selecting letter groups in cursive, calligraphic, and in printed form. So we have uh, uh, calligraphic, and we have uh, 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 the handwritten form, which is not necessarily calligraphic. Uh, it's not the art, but it is, uh, and nevertheless, it's handwritten. And we have the printed, so now we can see we can compare all the content because it's the same content what we found. Uh, if I may add, we have the same text as Odur explained, but we also have the dictionary of Ottoman Turkish. So if we, we can also look up the words in the dictionary, and we have two editions of the dictionary, an, uh, 1850s in handwriting and in the 1890s in print, which all uses the same, all of them use the same system. Okay, the book is called Vilasu to It is uh, the, the a summary of admonitions. It's actually it's a book on the Ottoman and the Russian war that took place in 1770s. And there was one man who recorded the whole war, uh, which was about, I believe, six to eight years long. So he, he wrote this book, uh, and then it uh, became extremely uh, one of the best sellers. In, uh, so it, it became one of the most copied. Uh, uh, manuscripts in the Ottoman Empire, and this is the first edition of that uh, that was uh, written in 1780, and um, this is the uh, second 
written form in 1795. And here we will be we will be explaining what love is kind of the glitch over here. So we will get into that later. But there's something actually uh, uh, more interesting uh, to, 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 to about this picture, aside from two different uh, uh, lighting styles. What's interesting is that here you can see that the handwriting is, is almost emulating a typewriting system and creating uh, uh, external word spacing. But this, of, of course, we, we don't know exactly what's going on in the mind of the, the, the copyist, but this is just an observation. And the third manuscript, uh, 1795 again, it's in uh, Nastali form. So because this is in Nastali form, we, 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 we're, we will be visiting this, revisiting this later on another uh, time, but we will be focusing on the, the last uh, book. Uh, yeah, book. There, there are two workhorse script styles, yeah. both Nastalik, and, <coughs> which is called Talik in Turkey, in the Ottoman days, and the Nas are both simply everyday production scripts. Yeah. They're not calligraphy. Yeah, we have to move on. So, and then we have three printed books. Uh, one in 17, uh, so one in 17, uh, in 18, uh, 1860, and our main uh, punch cutter as well as the printer, Ohan is the minister, and we have Ebuzia, uh, Meme he printed this in 18, uh, in 90, 20 years later, and then we have this in 1900, so. And the uh, real copies we have here? Yes, I have the original books, I, 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 they're part of my personal collection, so if you're curious to see and take a closer look, uh, afterwards, don't hesitate to approach us, please. So this is the, the close-up. So what we see here is on top Mehendis Yan's uh, typeface. It's a 24-point NASP. And uh, you can see Buzian's typeface and Kaspar uh, Kasserian's typeface. And what is actually here, well, this is a good indication of the way how Mehendis Yan set his typeface and his books is actually, it, it, it's more compact, so you can add Way more content to, to one line, and here you want to. You, you follow. Mehmed Sam follows the, uh, the the practice of not sp separating words with spaces, mm -hmm. whereas um, uh, the other ones uh, introduced the spacing uh, borrowed from European typography mm -hmm. because they were also greatly in touch with European printers. So, uh, so this is what we have here. Uh, the, the first source, second source is what we will be looking to Mehmed Sam and Yusuf and Kaspar. And uh, Tasni Tekotek uh, Nask is just to give you an idea of, of where does that sit in the midst of all this research. Uh, so th this is going to be the, the, the structure that we will be going through. So we have these columns. And, uh, but before we, 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 we plunge into this whole intense uh, uh, superimposition analysis, I want to quickly uh, mention where does the word Nask come from? It's, uh, well, the Turkish term for Nask is Nesi. And Nas and Nesi means uh, copy. So, it, so the, the whole uh, term itself suggests what is what its its its, its purpose. Is. And istisa is the action of copying, and and Ustensi is the the person who copies. And you can see the way how they all the the roots of these words where they derive from, just like how English borrowed loads of Latin. Uh, yeah, angry. So. Um, uh, and I, uh, just to let you know that uh, copyists in the Ottoman Empire are not some you know, people just writing you know, exactly what they're supposed to write. They were also editors. If they didn't like that word, they would be like, oh, Well, if they don't sense. think the text is explicit enough, they add the word explicit, Absolutely. which happens to be the one we found in many editions, except one of the sources, and it's probably not part of the original text. Yes, so this, the first source doesn't have the word for explicit. <laughs> so the second source, added that word, and all these printers pretty much uh, copied that. So now we know where, the, where these printers, where did they look at, which source they looked at. And overall, this is a fraction of what we have looked. And, but just to give you an overview of the way how we are constructing this, 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 this table. And um, I'm going to go a faster. And let's start. Yeah, this is the ideal uh, example. We find this, the same word, the same construction. <coughs> Well, we superimpose them to show you that the, if you superimpose them, you get the average construction. And that the average construction is comparable with <coughs> what everybody who speaks Ang English shares. They share English grammar, and each individual speaker of English has a, is a performer of English. And here you see they all share the same notion of how Arabic is constructed, but the actual constructions vary slightly. 
And we have a third, uh, an extra source uh, in the Quran. We, we selected words that we could also find in the Quran. So you can see the Quranic example, which is calligraphy, because Quranic copyists really make an extra effort to make it beautiful. And on the left top, you see a casual version, which is absolutely not calligraphy, but it's still Nasik. And the second, uh, which is called second source, but first source next to it is also not calligraphic. It's just text production. It's Nasik in a pure sense. Then Mohandas Jan, when he produces typography, to justify the effort, he looks at the calligraphy and not at the, at the casual writing. That's what every typographer would do. And the other ones actually copy Mohandas Jan. Mm -hmm. And Tasmim is based on de decotype research, which followed more or less the same logic as the one that Mohandas Jan followed. And, and, and the word Bahu? Is, uh, is that it, the reason why this is read is because it's a, it's a quotation from Quran, so that's how they highlighted it. And uh, but the first source didn't bother coloring with it. So let's see this construction here. Now we have to we have to we have to separate Ibn and Kasbah, the people who came after Medina, the printers. We just have to put them down here because you can see how they're slightly deviating from what Mohandisian followed, which is quite rigorous uh, uh, script grammar construction. So uh, the sorts are not uh, uh, conforming to that uh, protocol. So that's why I had to uh, remove them, and we are showing, uh, it's, it's a Quranic example, how it uh, matches with Mohandisian's uh, typeface. The word kalija, which is the word for sword, again has a very particular cascading uh, system where all the printers uh, uh, followed and the Quranic example also follows. However, there is something interesting appearing in 1840s, uh, about in the 1840s in Le Leipzig. So the, in Leipzig uh, we have this Quran printed, a uh, printed Quran that is uh, completely feeling there is something funny with these strange things, so maybe we need to you know, turn them into a bit more structured and, and turn these into Latin uh, kind of a system. It's the European counterpart of the whole thing. And the word for kaleme, which is the word for pencil, again, you can see the way how it, 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 it works with the uh, proper uh, Islamic calligraphy. And the way how it works, and uh, the way how the Europeans perceived it. It's actually the background of comments like elegant and ornamental yeah. typesetting, because the Europeans somehow thought that this is the way it should be correct. The Europeans think that it should be done like that, and the whole Middle East is doing it wrong. Yeah. And therefore, it's ornamental and uh, calligraphic or folkloristic. Yeah. And again, we have Mutazam. Oh, yes, uh, here I mean, this is a, a, this is a Turkish Ottoman dictionary from 1852. The dictionary of Thomas mentioned, and you can see the way how we we, we introduced this here and there because uh, sometimes we cannot find the same word in those dictionaries. But here you can see how it again conforms to the whole uh, 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 rigorous structure. And the word for sultlaru is a very nice example of of lam and ha and lam uh, connection, which you see it in. Uh, is, is, uh, 17th century master Ottoman uh, and uh, Islamic uh, calligraphers and, and in Armenian and work. Yeah, so we, we try to find exact match examples in all the sources and if we don't find an exact match we have a, a near match. The last segment in writing is missing in the Quranic one but it's exactly the same grammar system that generates these results. The word mefumuja is we have to separate Mifumunja, the, 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 the closed he, because it just uh, doesn't flow with the rest, so, but we can see, still see it here. And this is interesting because this is not only script grammar, but it, there is also, uh, it also conforms to uh, the convention of the idea of space, internal spacing. And you can see the way how even Mifumunja, the, 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 the spacing is also quite, quite uh, consistent. And you, you can see it's a counterpart in Islamic calligraphy, the art form, and the word for yeah. yeah. And the word for Pishkin. So we can't find exactly, Pishkin is a very particular strange Turkish word, it's just you cannot find that in Quran, or because tur tur Turkish has nothing to do with Arabic, I mean, but it borrows loads of long words from Arabic and, and Farsi. Sometimes it makes me think if, if, if Arabic and 
Persian didn't exist, what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> and the word Ruzka is a very good example, but there, there's something additional happening here. We are seeing Ibizia breaking what all these people are doing, but if you look at Ibizia, his, his calf is not, is not uh, uh, touching the, the, uh, the, the ascending stroke of, of, of uh, a caliph. So, uh, and we see this in Lam as well. He's, 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 he's deviating here for, for a very simple reason. This is just an observation. This is because he didn't want to create a use, a sword, a metal sword for calf and caliph or calf and Lam, because he is introducing Turkish orthographic uh, additions here to, 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 so that Ottoman Turks can pronounce the text better. So, in other words, there were not enough letters for Turkish in Arabic, and the, they're creating new Turkish letters by adding strokes. And it was a bit of a complication to get them to march in line with everything they had already for Arabic. And this is uh, just to give you an example of how the rest uh, is different. And you can see Kaspa, although quite you may think it's very clumsy, you know, uh, stroke modulations, and it's not a really uh, sharp, good-looking typeface, but it conforms perfectly. <coughs> And here again, Ebusia. It's pronounced Kitmeye, and, and the, the image is Kitmeke. And there, so the one, one K is getting the stroke uh, be, uh, under the low. Yeah, and oh, they, they both get a stroke below, yeah. although yes. they, they, they are meant for a non Arabic pronunciation of yeah. this word. Actually, uh, this is, uh, I just noticed this right now. There's a typo again done by Abusia. Yeah. Uh, this, 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 this trope is supposed to be above, actually, to, to, uh, to represent the, uh, the, 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 the silent G, the G breve, gitme, actually. And here you can see uh, again, that be the way how. Uh, Okay, two cases of this extra letter, they break the script grammar and thereby it becomes very similar to what Europeans think is the norm for the script. Yeah. On the right, on the left hand bottom. the word, you can see uh, it's, it's come from our in, in Islamic calligraphy. And Nemche, I was just telling Titus, where is, uh, it's actually the Nima, is the Turks called Viennese people Nemche. So uh, that's the way uh, how I connected his last name. And of course, a Slavic word Niemets, which means cannot speak properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just to mention quickly, you can see the way how Kaspar accidentally. This is just an error. I mean, it just happens. It's not like he has absolutely no idea. He accidentally put the, the, this word in the wrong place, but we corrected that in Photoshop just to, so that we don't break the flow. And Tutra, just let's move on because we have some Well, it's more of the same. We have a pack of examples, and it could be thousands of them, but we just selected a couple of them. This is this is worth this is this is worth explaining. You know, most of most of these most of these things have to do with the fusing or merging together of multiple letters into single units, and these actually enhance the legibility. And there is a, there is in, in a book by Florian Colmus, the writing systems of, of the world. There is an, uh, a reference to a dissertation that explains that different types of writing systems trigger different brain activity, and that uh, dyslexia is typically associated with alphabetic writing. Now, you see that when, when these letters, when these groups uh, that we showed produce new icons, visual uh, 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 ideas, uh, you can imagine that they trigger different brain activity. And here, in the middle of a piece of Ottoman text that is built out of, the, out of these constructions, this word by accident is built out of a whole string of separate letters like alphabetical writing. Yeah. And what happens? Yeah, in here, uh, this is, this is <coughs> it's a phrase, du, uh, du, 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 which is actually derived from Persian. It means extendedly, you know, like, really, like it generates extendedly. And you can see the way how it's actually extendedly. And here, uh, what happens is something funny happens. Although, you know, in the midst of all this great uh, printing and everything, he slips uh, uh, an extra vowel. And you can see Ebusia 
doing the same thing in the book that he printed 20 years later. So this is where we found out that Elysia was actually just a pure blind copy. In fact, there are many, many stupid errors in Elysia that are simply and, 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 and then, yeah, we, copied in Elysia. Yeah, so when we find a mistake in Mohendisians, uh, if it's a spelling mistake or, or a script grammar error, we immediately go to Ebizuya and it's just perfect match. So, although Ebizuya is a Turkish printer, he was like, probably, he was like, you don't, don't comprehend, just set it here. You just put it in your chest. Oh, that's good, that good, because that works. So let's exactly copy the way how this guy made it. He was printed to the Sultan, so it's, it's probably false. Yeah. <laughs> he was a fancy printer. But then, suddenly, this is, what's going on here? This is, this is a handwritten. It's a dictionary, a red house dictionary, the, that simply enumerates all the words that in use in Ottoman Turkish in the 19th century. Uh, but this guy gets lost as well. <laughs> so he forgets a letter and has to squeeze it on top. Yes, to put it so up. the same word, we have it with one letter too many and one too few, and later squeeze it. So the people got really, really confused with this. And obviously when I saw that, I thought of Florian Kolmaz and his reference to dyslexia and alphabetic writing. This is uh, an nice example. And, but actually, I have to quickly mention, I went a too fast here. Uh, here in the second source, this whole Nas is turning into Nastalik. And the reason why is because this, uh, this, 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 <coughs> or the, the copies, completely got lost. And he totally decided to take a huge chunk out of the original text. And then, afterwards, someone else comes in <laughs> and cleans up his whole mess. By adding all this nostalgic, which is also food for thought, because uh, with all these spaces, you have get the impression that it is a very late copy, <laughs> yeah. but that someone else later comes in with another workhorse writing style, which has no spacing at all. So apparently, it's before. It, it, it's very interesting how this uh, uh, juxtaposes. And here uh, we are again. Uh, it's, it turns into nostalgic. So you can actually see in which uh, part of the, uh, the original handwritten manuscript we are. So we uh, we haven't completed the whole book. We're only about like in twenty percent of the book. Okay. Now this gets a bit interesting. Again, the same thing as I mentioned. Uh, Elusia is not creating a very a, a particular source for this because it's either it's just too much work or let's just leave it aside. So he breaks it on the uh, and prioritizes orthography here in his uh, script. <coughs> <coughs> uh, but then uh, something fascinating. Okay, let, let me take over here. This is <laughs> this is what you call a minimal pair. These are two identical letter groups, but it's one one that's different. The last letter is different. Uh, you proceed. Uh, the, here, this is a, an L and an R, and uh, the other one. Uh, ah, <laughs> this is something. Uh, this is this is where the rubber meets the road. I picked this this thing up in South Lebanon in 1980 uh, or 1983 when the uh, Israelis were setting up uh, pro-Israeli militias in the south, and they were called uh, the South Lebanese Army. The United Nations called them Lawis, which is an, uh, an abbreviation an abbreviation for Lebanese, armed and uniformed by Israel. And they even gave them shoulder patches saying, uh, as they thought, Jesh Lubnan al Hor, the army of free Lebanon. And that would have worked if they actually used the shape that we marked in red. But the one that I picked up didn't look like that. It looked like this. Which turns everything into actually... Yeah, yeah let, let, let me finish this. So this is, it, this is a slight nuance that is typical for Western, Western educated writers of Arabic. They don't have, a, they're not completely in touch with the reality of the script. So what you see here is, uh, rem remember that <coughs> ISIS has now a logo that says that Muhammad is the prophet of God, where Muhammad is at the bottom, then the prophet and then God. So you can read logo graphs in, or logograms in Arabic from the bottom up. So. If you look again at this logo, at this, at this shoulder patch, and given the error which makes it a D instead of a Ra, it reads as al hada Jaish Lubna, which means the army of Lebanon committed left Islam. <laughs> but, 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 but what's amazing is so they made, fool, they made fools out of it. these hundreds of volunteers got a patch from Israel that, that made them the, the laugh of the Lebanon. collectively, yeah. collectively, though. collectively left Islam. <laughs> So, so to always pay attention to the details. But we have, uh, so to wrap it up, uh, I, I want to uh, wrap up with our observations. 
Uh, script grammar combined with calligraphy helped typography to gain widespread acceptance in the Middle East because the states uh, from after Mohenesian, after Mohenesian, and in some certain cases before Mohenesian, you do see a very consistent uh, convention, uh, a, a social protocol of how they thought that this is supposed to be constituted. <coughs> I really need to add something to it. This is also in reaction to many European speculations about why did the Muslims always reject our brilliant invention of typography. They must be too indolent, indolent or stupid. And uh, it never occurred to the Europeans that they maybe didn't really understand how the script works and produced useless results. That's why the Yemenis couldn't, uh, didn't want to read it and why uh, 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 William Lane came back and uh, got dizzy when he saw European prints. And, 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 and so in order to get acceptance for the concept, they first had to be more close, uh, closely related to the reality of the script. And after that, they started to move forward to simplify it. In the Ottoman context, simplification only began after the facsimile typography led to the breakthrough. So if you want to simplify something, you need to, you need to, you need to know that thing. And you need to know that orally. You need to know from A to Z the way how it is uh, it, it, it originated and how it developed and how it changed uh, technology. So uh, people who studied uh, sim uh, the simplification phenomenon of, of Arabic script and typefaces uh, should I heavily recommend them to look into 1860s of the Ottoman uh, newspaper owner and printer Ibrahim Shinasi because he's actually uh, that he's the one that I found that dates early to uh, simplify in 212 glyphs and his student Ebuzia uh, 20 years later Ebuzia talked about his teacher Shinas in 1880 he published an article that is is a typographic argument about how the simplified Arabic versus Ebuzia's uh, 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 script grammar oriented uh, typeface and the differences and then he criticizes it and he talks about it, but he still says something similar to the, the, the discourse that goes on today, which is, look, you can still read it. Well, it makes perfect, perfect sense because, of the, but for instance, <coughs> most noises about simplification are now originated in Lebanon, <coughs> but Lebanon was part of this larger world. And, and also the people who came with these ideas were not all Turks or, 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 or Muslims, like uh, we uh, started to observe that it was a, the, the Armenians played an important role in this whole process. But in any way, I think we, the, the, the conclusion, that, that we, the message that we want to give with this talk is that it really makes sense to uh, investigate uh, this kind of structures. Uh, um, even if you don't like to use them, it's always good to be in, uh, familiar with the history. And it's also important that uh, given the, the period, the duration of uh, Ottoman control of the Middle East, in the Middle East, and in fact, uh, typography was recognized as a power tool. Uh, that you cannot ignore this whole uh, uh, era, era, and and and, and uh, a contribution if you try to understand how Arabic uh, typography came about. Yeah, and um, so what I was trying to say is, I want to quickly go back to that because that, that's important for me. That article in 1880. Where he mentions, well, this is this is kind of not good, and this whole simplified thing, and he criticizes the teacher. But he says, nevertheless, you can still read it. So, but it does not conform, which the word kaide, it does not conform to how it's supposed to be. So he really introduces the word how it's supposed to be because this is the convention. This is the way how you know we read. That's it's not this you know romantic flavor or this oriental you know. Uh, Elegance. Yeah, elegance, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Yeah, uh, this has a lot of. For those of you who read this script, it says the Katanizici, or in all Turkish, the Katanizici, the Chok Teşekkür Ediyoros. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your talk. Any question? And, yeah. Oh. Thank you. Um, it was fascinating and great research. And let me play devil's advocate. Um, as, as every linguist would probably acknowledge, um, languages change and grammar changes. Um, what's your take on that? Do you think? 
you think there is a grammar that has been lost and that you're trying to uh, no, resuscitate? No, 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 that's not the point. The point is simply plain research and curiosity. There's no, there's no idea of imposing something. No, this. yeah. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, I, I, my, my basic passion is historical linguistics, but I would, I would not want people to return to proto-European, proto-European. That's all good for the But it helps you to understand how things work. And of course, uh, don't forget that these structures have not disappeared. Everybody now is struggling with the Nastalik script, which is just a plain case of totally conventional uh, script grammar that resists being simplified. So all of a sudden, the tables have turned. Typography cannot, uh, technology cannot impose its simplification drive on that culture. Uh, now all of a sudden, everybody is striving to find solutions for this particular script that re re refuses to play along with that game. Uh, the four missing, no, I'm sorry, the missing uh, the Turkish sounds that are not in standard Arabic, like the G, that, were those taken from Farsi or did they make up their own? Farsi. All of them. They're no, still like, no, 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 the K and how did, like the vowels, oh, the vowels? The vowels, they work with, it's a very simple construction. If you put an A and a vowel, that may represent O, E, O diaresis, U, and U diaresis. So you kind of pick it up from the context. So for instance, the word gör, which means to see, may easily mean kör, which means to be blind. So that kind of also indicates, maybe it's not the, the best. No, but the question, the question also pertains to where, how did the Turks get the idea to add these characters to, to their system? Well, the system, that idea was floating in the world of Islam all the time, because the basic system of Arabic script is, is bare skeletons, uh, bare bones. Uh, and, 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 and the dots were added later, and uh, even the vowels came first. And with this concept, were quickly picked up by the Persians, and, and, and then later on, all the modern extensions of Arabic script are basically skeleton plus diacritics. Mm -hmm. And this is this is actually a, a deep flaw in the Unicode encoding principle, that instead of encoding a handful of basic concepts, uh, uh, 14 characters plus a handful of composition elements and then allowing the uh, uh, compositions to take place on the fly, they have tried to freeze every imaginable occurring uh, uh, composition as if they were characters and now they have to add block after block after block of Unicode, uh, which is only the beginning because they're now thinking about problems with spoofing. Uh, there are many cases that uh, these variant letters look the same under certain, certain contextual positions. There are, I have written a report for ICANN where I show that there are 20, 30, 40 ways of making exactly the same possible images of Arabic with underlying codes that are completely different. And that's because of this law. So the law, that's so basically the, the, the principle that the Turks uh, uh, used is a very simple principle and it should have been observed by people who encoded Arabic for the industry. Just to uh, add something to that, I have, a, I, have a, I have a dictionary that was printed in 1928, right after the script reform, to show how the Ottoman uh, uh, Arabic Turkish, to uh, how that translated to Latin Turkish. If you open the page Ein, you will see uh, loads of Turkish words, and of course, most of them derive from, uh, from Arabic and, and, and Farsi, but you see uh, all those words, they start with either sometimes O, I, U, C. Uh, that e exactly, exactly. I just want to add that maybe that would also. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.